Hi, and welcome to VTuber Talks with Aka Palisa. I'm here with Mocha. Welcome, Mocha. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Lisa. How are you? I'm doing good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So, uh, hi, I'm Mocha, as you guys know. Um, I guess a little bit about myself is I, I am 25 years old, and I'm a cat girl that likes chocolate. <laughs> I, I, I guess another thing also is I, I, I make it it's more of a joke on the stream, but it's actually something that does uh, uh, come up pretty often because I try not to do it too often. Mm -hmm. But I am actually lactose intolerant. So I guess it does go with the cat girl theme. Because <laughs> the adult cats can't have milk and dairy. Yeah. yeah. So how did you come up with the name Mocha Nyako? I was wanting to go with a cat girl like motif. And I was wanting to actually take emphasis, or not emphasis, but I wanted to take inspiration from one of my cats that I currently own, who has like a chocolatey kind of brown color to his fur. Mm -hmm. And how I ended up coming up with the name Mocha Nyako is, quite literally, I looked up Japanese cat names, saw Mocha, and went, oh, it's actually <laughs> literally a translation of the, the word mocha, like what you would put in coffee. Like a drink, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, I, for the longest time, I went by the moniker Mew, and I was like, I really want to put that into, into it, but I want to have a Japanese take on it because I am a big fan of Japanese culture, and so I went with Nyako. That's, that's literally just how it came up. I, I looked up Japanese cat names and then went Nyako at the end. Do you have a lore? And if so, could you tell us a little bit about it? I actually do have a lore. Um, so my lore is that I was originally just a normal house cat that ended up getting lost in an alleyway. Um, I was determined to get back to my original home. However, I ended up getting lost and a old witch had come by. Lo and behold, she had my weakness. She had some magical milk and gave it to me and I ended up turning into basically a cat girl that way. Um, I still haven't found my home yet, but I found a home that I'm quite happy with right now. And that's, that's on Twitch. When did you start streaming? If you're wanting a full timeline of when I started streaming, mm -hmm. I had dabbled back in 2017 and 2018. So it was kind of an off and on thing. I, I was working with a job that should have been full time, um, just simply how much I was working and I never made time to, to continue with it mm -hmm. until I ended up losing my job. When I lost my job, I just went, hey, I want to start streaming. And so I started streaming again. Um, and I don't actually regret it. So uh, technically 2017, 2018, but mm -hmm. I started streaming more heavily, more consistently back in 2020, October, 2020. What made you want to start content creation slash streaming? It goes back to 2017. Mm -hmm. um, originally, so as I had said, I had dabbled in streaming and all of that fun jazz back in 2017. Um, between 2017 and I believe 2018, okay. might have also been 2019. I can't remember. I was doing uh, <laughs> I was doing playthroughs with a friend of mine of both Fire Emblem Awakening and nice. Pokemon Sun, nice, and nice. we would sit there <laughs> and we would go through. Um, all of the all of the things and, and we would sit there and voice over it and and i had done my own recordings before personally i don't I, I like the content creation of streaming is a little bit harder because i i you know have issues trying to figure out what i want to play or trying mm -hmm. to schedule things out but i i can't edit videos so a lot of times my my you know my vods just go up it, it was because I already had a uh, prior engagement, I guess I'm going to say, uh -huh. with with it already through doing the, the content with my friend. Mm -hmm. So it was an easy kind of transition to, to being more consistent in a way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I had also just forgotten. I, 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 will, I won't ever give the YouTube channel out, but I actually did my own unboxings too. Ooh. <laughs> Of what? So, of, of like um, subscription or like 
random products or random okay. actually um a, a little bit of it was uh, like opening pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards um a couple of years ago i went to a con and i had gotten you know those 40 dollar mystery grab bag bo uh, boxes mm -hmm. i had gotten one of those um and and i would do videos for those but I, again i just i don't have the patience to edit the videos down so a lot of the videos yeah, are lost like to time raw editing kind of thing yeah but uh, I, I have also done an actual, like, having to talk to myself before. <laughs> I, I prefer streaming. <laughs> yeah. What made you want to be a VTuber as opposed to using a face cam? I have a super simple answer that you may have heard multiple times. <laughs> Okay. I have not only body issues, but I have confident issues. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a lower self-esteem. Um, it, it's something that I've been working on. I, I will admit it's, for lack of better words, it's this childhood trauma that, that caused it. But okay. um, it, it really comes from the fact that I have very low self-esteem i don't see myself as pretty despite the fact that my boyfriend would tell you otherwise <laughs> um and i'm sure he's right <laughs> i'm sure he's right too but the other thing also is is i and and it, it comes up with that issue that we had on twitter with vtubers going like oh i can show my face it doesn't mm -hmm. matter um i i would like to have an air of and an amid yeah i'm sorry yeah, i can't same. english <laughs> <laughs> i i could uh, like see you're about to do like the finding nemo the and then oh but yeah. I, I i would like to have an air of anonymity to yeah. to myself um yeah uh, i feel that so much so that i am actually looking forward to getting a P.O. box out there because mm -hmm. I have had fans say, hey, I want to send you something, yeah. but I don't want anyone to have my address. No offense yeah. to my fans. It's yeah. just with how the world is right now, with how certain things are happening, I value my safety. Yeah. And, safety and, and like and privacy and just like your overall sense of well-being kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and like I said, with, with the Twitter thing, how how people on, if I remember correctly, it was 4chan, was able to DOS some VTubers with their photos. Mm -hmm. I, I just, ever since that, I was like, I, you guys may get to see my hands. You may yeah. get to see just a glimpse of my actual hair color. But mm -hmm. that's, that's it. That's all you yeah. guys are going to see. And yeah. I just... It's good to have, like, specific boundaries that you want stuck to, though. Like, mm -hmm. whether it's through VTubing or just life in general. I mean, some people that I have met through VTubing, I, I would consider them as friends or, or close friends. And and those are the ones that will, will know my name, my mm -hmm. actual name. Um, but outside of that, if I'm, like, streaming with any of my friends, I, I make an effort to be like, hey, try yeah. not to use my real name, you know, yeah, to, yeah. to help keep that am anonymity. Anonymity, <laughs> yes. Um, um, just an input. The same. It's like, I don't, I've, like, I guess I've mentioned it on stream. It's like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be some person like a YouTuber or whatever who gets recognized on the street or in the grocery store and people try to talk yeah. to me. That sounds horrible. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I fear, <laughs> actually. Disgusting. <laughs> like, I'm trying to get my milk and somebody's like, can I get a photo? I'm like, no, <laughs> leave me alone. I'm trying to grocery shop. <laughs> Who yeah, are you? Yeah. I don't know you. We've talked about your lore and why you became a VTuber already. So how did you come up with your original character design? I was looking at what was basically present in the VTuber community. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it that I was seeing amongst the popular characters was cutesy looking girls and Neko girls, girls <laughs> neko girls uh, well the the, the neko girls is, is more of a personal preference kind oh, of no. thing but it, it a lot of it was big booba <laughs> <laughs> and um at, at the time when i was looking into it i was realizing that and and i don't like to to 
bring a lot of drama in, into these kind of situations. But mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the Twitter users were having issues with Japanese animation um, in particular. And this is where a lot of my my design came from. Um, uh, uh, Uzuki, okay. the the girl with the with the really that's like 23 with the short gray hair and really big. <laughs> That's that's where I got that uh, inspiration from because I, I really like that design. I've always been a fan of that. Uh, again, it's coming from, you know, confidence issues, image issues. Um, but that's where a lot of it came from. Again, Catgirl is is a personal preference thing. My uh, my outfit actually was one of those that I where I live in the south it's really warm in the summer so I was like why why would I want to perceive something that is not what I'm gonna be wearing and so I decided on the tank top and mm -hmm. and, um, and shorts, shorts. Mm -hmm. but the other thing also was I really wanted to put an emphasis on my favorite color pink so a, a lot of it was what I prefer in a character when I was actually creating a character but when the like when I actually pushed out my my character sheet mm -hmm. and all of that fun all, all all of this fun jazz uh and it's just it's just a belief that I have in general when it comes to art I actually had my artist who made my character sheet have fun with it I told him what I wanted, but he had, I wanted him to have fun with it. And I was happy with what he got, as you can see, because it's yeah. very, with, with the exception of, of the hair being um, more of a, more of a straight cut instead of that jagged cut. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm very happy with what I got and I still am. Um, but a, a lot of it actually came from me realizing that uh, there was anime that I haven't seen yet. And... I, I I really really liked just what I was a, was given basically. Speaking of your model, who were the artists that worked on it? So if you are wanting to talk a uh, model in general, mm -hmm. this one was made by the artist Suki Doki. Suki Doki, sorry, <laughs> Suki Doki. She she was my artist. Rather, I don't know if she is doing art. I looked at her Twitter recently and she said that she had gotten a nine to five job okay. and wasn't actually like available for art, but I would definitely keep an eye out because some people can get used to their nine to five jobs. Yeah. yeah. So if anyone's interested in actually being able to commission Suki, I, I definitely recommend it. Do you have any preferences or restrictions on what art can be made of your character? I do not actually. Um, I because I am in the the VTuber community and because I'm aware of the nature of how my how how Mocha looks, mm -hmm. um, I I'm aware that people may come out with lewd art and it may say how who like what kind of person I am. But I absolutely encourage any kind of of art, be it. Um, just just like a drawing or, or whatever mm -hmm. however people can express themselves do you think or do your friends think that your voice matches your model i actually i don't know i don't think my my voice mo uh, matches my model exactly because i mean my actions my tone definitely does but i don't i don't think my model or my my voice itself does mm -hmm. i have had friends of friends tell me that i instead of being a cat girl because of i guess my voice or, or the tone i should be a fox instead and are you ever personally self-conscious of your voice in vods or videos yes yes <laughs> it's um it's definitely a con because I, how, how I see it is anyone who is doing anything, be it music, art, uh, content creating, for example, mm -hmm. I, I feel like you learn better if you're able to, for lack of better words, be able to go back and watch and see what you can improve on. Yeah. 
I don't like my voice enough. I cannot listen to my voice to okay. be able to improve on that. And mm. so I, it's it's a downfall that I really shouldn't do. But I rely on my, I rely on my chat to tell me if like a certain game is too loud if I'm uh, playing a game or if it's too quiet if the game is too uh uh too is overpowering me or mm -hmm. if you just can't hear me at all yeah uh, again it's it's my shortcoming I I don't like listening to my own voice so I can't improve in that way but I no <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> I don't like listening to my own voice do you play any characters on stream or emphasize any parts of your personality? I don't play any characters in particular. I mean, so so I I will admit I actually have the, the, the questions just in case uh, if I don't catch your question. <laughs> um, I have the questions up. But I, I do try to emphasize on my very, my, my chilled personality. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not very energetic. I will admit i i fake a lot of my my energy if i'm energetic unless i'm actually like energetic that day mm -hmm. um but i i don't i don't like being overbearing and and uh, what's what's the word i'm looking for energetic overbearing uh I, I just want to be chill for my chat because a lot of times there, my chat is there. Anyone who tunes in in that matter, not just my tap chats themselves, but whoever ends up tuning in, they're normally doing something else. They're doing homework. They're mm -hmm. they're playing a different game, and I don't I don't want them to to think that they're missing out on something. Yeah, I mean. Obviously, I'll, I'll end up getting super excited about something if it's actually something that's, you know, exciting. But um, I, I typically like to be super chills and, and that's something that I try to emphasize um, just simply because I just I know the world out there is chaotic. Sometimes people come home to watch their favorite streamers and not everyone wants to sit down and, and come from a nine to five job where they got to be peppy and optimistic yeah. and have to... Granted, some people are this way, but I, I know certain people don't want to come home and, and watch someone who's also optimistic. They just want to sit there and just vibe and chill. And so mm -hmm. I try to emphasize on that chillness. Yeah, cozy vibes. What makes you keep wanting to stream to this very day? So... 100% clarity like I'm gonna be super transparent about it <laughs> originally it was because I had hit affiliate and I was making money off of it okay 100% transparent <laughs> with that one yep. because again I this is this is though. what I'm yeah yeah and and this is what I'm wanting to do as as a career mm -hmm. um right now I I will admit it's actually my community knowing that um whenever i do stream if if i'm not already feeling bad myself but i can make someone days better uh that that's what makes me want to stream now mm -hmm. and and continuously stream is is knowing that i can at least make someone's day a little bit better what do you hope to achieve during your vtubing career what are your goals and aspirations so obviously the the full-time that's a goal that you mentioned yeah um it's definitely a goal i've will admit i've i've given i've almost given up on my goal a few oh. times because again with my transparency it was money it wasn't just as a oh i'll do this as a hobby but it's i i definitely want to make it into something that i could live off of um i, I will i know it's not like where i could just go to a part-time job and make however much they happen to be offering and then be able to live out that mm -hmm. i know there are going to be days that are months rather that i'm not going to be able to do that but i would like to get to that point point. and another goal it's a strange goal i will admit okay. is to be popular or well known enough <laughs> to have lewd art made of me okay. I, I think i think if you have made it in the okay. internet world all right uh -huh. <laughs> if you if you made it into the internet world i think having lewd art is a great like it is i mean a that's, goal that's definitely not my goal but all right <laughs> i am I, I, I am friend character that is all i am but but in, in reality it's yeah. it's 
definitely making it into a career where I can I can definitely make money off of it and and be able to live off of it on my own but it's also one of those to be able to have people in whatever i have have cooksy for example be able to come into my streams and and clip videos or clip uh, uh things out of stream and and be able to to get that recognition also mm -hmm. I, I think that's that's the goals really what is something that you have really enjoyed about being a VTuber? It would be being able to still be myself, but not be myself, if if that makes sense. Um, I, I, again, I am I before before the tragedy hit of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, I used to. It was only once a year because I could only afford it, but I used to go to a con that would happen to be sit in the same state as I am in, but outside of my city. And it was three days where I didn't have to be myself. I could be whoever I happened to cosplay as. That's the thing that I enjoy about VTubing is that I can quite literally pull up my, my streaming program, get ready to stream, and still be myself without having to be myself. Mm -hmm. I, I think the one thing that I enjoy about being a VTuber is that that liberty of still being able to feel like I'm cosplaying. Yeah. Do you have any special skills or talents? So I don't know if art <laughs> being able to draw would be considered a special talent, yeah. but I, I, I have been able to uh, draw. I've made my own like my my new overlays. If, if anyone gets to tune into my my Twitch streams, mm -hmm. um, I had overlays that I have made or I had gotten made and then I ended up deciding that I wanted to change a few things and I made my own overlays so I would say art is one of those I'm I'm a super amateur like extreme amateur about it but I and I don't do it on streams but I I do like to voice act I, I do like to be able to just sit down with whatever and just be able to just do a voice it's 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 fun and i again i don't know if that would be considered a talent because i'm i'm very amateur about it what are your favorite animals cats <laughs> okay so <laughs> I love how you bounced up <laughs> <laughs> um so uh, definitely cats um again i i had two cats uh i actually grew up with cats both cats and dogs but i gravitated more towards cats because they're just they're so easy to take care of like in, in a retrospect of dogs they're easier to take care of mm -hmm. and they're just so independent and it's it's nice because I growing up I, I was you know every, like every other child I I wasn't I wasn't a very dependent child once I could actually formulate my own my own emotions basically, okay. um, but outside of that outside of cats I've always been a fan of foxes, mm -hmm. and it's just because it goes back to cats but. Um, it, I, how I see foxes as cats and dogs' bodies. Mm -hmm. They have the mind of a cat because they're just so opinionated and, and so random. But they look like dogs, and I love that. Um, and I've always been a fan of hamsters. Um, a uh, fun fact, by the way, I I had contemplated three different uh, animal designs that I wanted to do for, for myself, for my model. Mm -hmm. And one of them was actually a hamster. Yeah, but um, I cats are definitely my favorite. But if I were to choose multiple ones, it would be foxes and hamsters with the cats. Mm -hmm. What got you into gaming? I believe it was my father. So my father has basically been playing games since the creation of games. So back in the 1970s, if I remember correctly. Um, like he remembers he remembers seeing the arcades and seeing the arcades go out of business and he he actually saw the evolution from from 8-bit to what we have now he so he's he's <laughs> I'm not calling my father old by the way but he has seen a lot when it comes to electronics and, mm -hmm. and gaming and one of my fondest memories of that is basically pulling up one of the kitchen ta uh, kitchen chairs 
and sitting down and watching him just go through the the barons in in World of Warcraft and going through the crossroads and and all of that. Um, mm-hmm. But it was definitely my father that got me into gaming, and I've I've been gaming since I was five six years old. So for almost all my life, I've been gaming because of him. What genre or specific games are your favorites right now? I would have to say it would be anything that is a Japanese role-playing game. So, so like Pokemon, Persona, um, those kind of things. I have ever since I have become more mature, I mm-hmm. guess since since I actually started playing because I used to. I used to play games like Pokemon and and that was all that I would play and I when I was when I was younger I would play Legend of Zelda like Wind Waker but I would never get past um the very first time you would go into like when you first start the game you're on the first island I wouldn't go past that because I always saw the next island where you had to go as super hard so I never got past that but as I grew up and as I, I've, I've gotten older, I started challenging myself more um, so I could be able to beat the games that I used to play as I can. Um, that's like right now I'm on my streams. Granted, I'm, I'm taking my time with it. I'm currently playing the new Shin Megami Tensei game on, on stream and that kicks my butt. Mm-hmm. I, I don't like playing these challenging games, but I'm, it is fun. So I, anything that I guess is a junior or Japanese role playing game, then that has some difficulty to it. I that's that's the what I'm currently into. Do you watch anime, and if so, what are your favorite ones? Um, I do watch anime. I have been watching anime basically since I was a kid. And my first anime is a toss up between three different ones. Okay. It, I I don't know remember exactly how it came like in which order but it was either Hamtaro, Pokemon or Digimon. Okay. I know it was either Pokemon to Digimon, but I don't know if it was Hamtaro first. Um but I have been watching anime and and I have one particular anime that I enjoy watching but like I also have a genre. Mm-hmm. Um Sailor Moon is something that I grew up with. Uh, I remember watching it when I was was when I was a kid. I caught the reruns, just to nice. clarify. Yeah, but okay. um, like it had disappeared from the internet or from from the TV world after I think the episode where Mamoru actually broke up with Usagi. I think that's the mm-hmm. last episode I saw, and then like. Before Sailor Moon Crystal came out, it made a resurgence. I had saw it at Spencer's one day, and uh. It blew my mind. It blew my mind. I was like, oh my god, I remember this. <laughs> and then Sailor Moon Crystal came out, and I, that was like right after I had read the manga. So I actually can't go back and watch the 90s anime because I love the manga more. Mm-hmm. So Crystal Crystal is my favorite of the of the section. But when it comes to genres, um, I'm normally watching either anything that is girly, so shoujo, or uh, isekai. I-, I really like the isekai concept. Mm-hmm. There's a, uh, an abundance of right now. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. My, my favorite one right now is uh, My Life as a Villainous. Yes. That's, that's my favorite. And I, it's because uh, I need to catch up on so much of that. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I watched like two episodes of season two and then mm-hmm. I realized one of the voice actors is also the one who voices child in Genshin and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh no. Yeah, I didn't yeah. Even notice. Oh. Do you have any hobbies or activities that you do outside of streaming? Yes and no. So mm. I I draw. Um I, I try to do my own emotes. I am it's a top secret kind of thing at the moment, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I have something that I'm actually working on in the future okay. for streaming. It's more trying to get the concept down, if you if you know what I mean. But right. um, I used to do it, and I want to get back into it, but I used to build Gundams. Um, I like have the, the multiple... modeling type thing? Yeah, oh. yeah, the model kits. Um, I have 
a ton of model kits have strewn about my room. I have some in boxes. I have some that are half complete. Um, I have that I had gotten for my birthday and it, it wounds me to this day because I lost a piece and I broke pieces. But I have a, um, so, so Gundams come in different grades. So you have high grade, um, I don't remember the, the other grades. And then you have the higher price ones, which is real grade. No, not real grade. I don't remember the one of the higher ones. But you have you had different grades for, for your model kits. Mm -hmm. And right now it's I, I haven't checked it recently, but when I checked it was about a hundred and fifty dollar model model kit. Closer to two hundred dollars. But I had gotten a model kit for my birthday that I absolutely adore. And like I said, it wounds me because it's such an expensive model kit. Mm -hmm. And I lost pieces and I broke pieces. <laughs> oh gosh. But um, as of right now, I can't I can't afford uh, model kits anymore. So I, it's something I would love to stream, by the way. But it's it's one of those that because I don't af I can't afford the it, finances, I can't bring yeah. myself. Adulting, am I right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Gross. But I. Uh, on top of that, I also I also game in my free times. When when Inwalker comes out, where I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing that after like I'm gonna be streaming my content for it. But I'm also off stream. I'm gonna be doing whatever I need to do. So like uh, I'm, I'm gonna be playing games also. Basically, <laughs> this, yeah, yeah. this is my answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you're feeling low, unmotivated, or like you aren't where you want to be at in your career, what do you do to bring yourself out of that and to motivate yourself? So the thing is, is I actually don't have an answer for that. More, I have, well, uh, I do have an answer. I, I basically tell myself that I'm being stupid because <laughs> I am super grateful for where I am. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have a very loving community and that's, that's what brings me sometimes out of it. But sometimes I, and, and I'm sure you can relate to this, Lisa, but, um, I sometimes you just you dig that hole so deep that you can't bring yourself out of it and it's it's something that I just I'm I'm trying to learn I'll, I'll be honest and it's sometimes sometimes and remembering that I have I have the community that I have the the people who are so excited and so happy and 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 don't regret the day they they got to see my streams um mm -hmm. that that helps but again sometimes it's just there's there's just those days that you dig yourself so deep and you just you don't yeah. know how to pull yourself up if that's anything but the, those times it's like sometimes just venting to somebody can help yeah and normally when those days happen because those days do happen i normally vent to one of my friends who happened to be there when i reached affiliate and um to my boyfriend actually it's more often to my boyfriend because he 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 listens and he tries to help yeah. but and, and and i don't want to stress my friend out currently mm -hmm. um but it's it's definitely one of those that i do rant to them to both of them and and nine times out of ten it, it helps and, and i'm able to dig myself out of that hole but it, yeah. it doesn't it yeah <laughs> we're human <laughs> so we, we 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 have our days there's ups and downs that's that's a part of life are there any hardships or hard lessons that you've learned since becoming a VTuber slash content creator? Yes. Yes, I actually have. Um, I'm, I'm still learning one of the lessons, actually. Um, it, it's, it's hard. It, this is a hard lesson I've learned and I'm trying to fix it. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to make friends in, in the as a VTuber. It's something... Like I said, I'm I'm trying to trying to learn how to make it better, and I'm trying to make an effort. But uh, yeah, I I don't I don't mean to be I, I'm sorry by <laughs> no, the way good. for being so. I it's just I I don't want to go. It, it's a topic I want to talk about, but I don't want to go too into yeah. detail about it kind of thing. It's like unless, um, unless you're you're personally reaching out, it can be. Yeah, and then I'm, I'm an introvert, so it's it's extremely hard. Mm -hmm. It's funny because I'm I'm a streamer and uh, I, I don't like oh, people, yeah, that's, but that's um, very common. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 
it's one of those that I definitely, I am definitely trying. And it's, it's a hard lesson that I'm learning. Um, I've also, uh, uh, I guess a lesson that I've also learned uh, that is very hard for me to swallow currently is mm-hmm. not everyone out there, especially in the VTuber community, not just the streamer or content creator community, but um, not everyone out there is there to help you. Oh, yeah. Um, if if they are there to help you, they're wanting something in Clout return. Clout chaser. <laughs> huh? Clout chaser. Yeah. yeah. And, and I... And I guess this this ties into the whole, like, it's hard for me. It's, it's a hard lesson for me to come over yeah. for, for me, meeting friends because I don't want to be in that situation. I don't want to someone to think... I'm clout chasing or whatever yeah. when I just want to be genuine friends or at least acquaintances. But it's definitely something that I've I've had to learn that I've actually encountered twice mm-hmm. uh, that not everyone out there is nice, I guess, okay. or, or out there with your best intentions in mind. Do you have any advice for anyone who is looking to become a content creator? I will admit, when you gave me this this list of questions, um, my my first question or my first thought when I saw that question was, I'm going to answer with, don't, don't become one. Oof. But that's because I I am starting to realize the hardships of becoming a content creator, mm-hmm. of of. Yeah, sometimes waking up in the middle of the night going, oh no, is it the day? Do I have to stream this day? Mm-hmm. But I, I, because I've, I've woken up <laughs> like on my days off, I've woken up going, what day is it? <laughs> because I don't, I don't keep track of dates anymore. I've actually forgotten about my mother's birthday before. Oh, no. <laughs> I've, I've forgotten so many birthdays already because ever since i became a uh a a streamer because i don't i don't look at the dates anymore Mm -hmm. i mean i'll look at dates for games that are coming up because that's going to be you know one game that will probably give me traction but i don't look at dates anymore i make meshes together after a while yeah yeah and and it ends up being those that i just look at the day is and and go is it a day that i stream no okay i get to do whatever i want Mm -hmm. or or vice versa um so i guess my advice to those who in in a serious term and not me (laughs) just saying hey don't become a content creator i i guess what my answer would be would be or my advice would be be aware and don't it's going to be scary at first, but don't don't worry if all of a sudden you're forgetting days because uh, uh, you forgot someone's birthday because it's just it's just a Wednesday to you because that's when you stream or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and and don't don't stress the the small stuff. Um, I, I'm a I'm a small creator. I the last few times i've looked at my statistics i've gotten like five to seven viewers and i i will admit i'm on my way to being partnered but it's one of those that i look at those when i was originally doing three or four viewers Mm -hmm. and i go it's going to be another it's going to be another good day it's going to be another uh, i'll maybe hit eight and i'll be happy um but yeah don't don't sweat the don't sweat the small stuff Mm -hmm. be be appreciative of those who who are actually there uh, i guess another advice would be be financially prepared because it's expensive or it, it's expensive um not only in just the 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 game aspect but if you want to become a vtuber for example unless you have someone that can hook you up with a deal you're going to be looking at it, at a lot of money for this kind of stuff yeah. um but it's it's one of those that if you don't have uh, if you're a small time VTuber or not VTuber but just a small time content creator you're not going to be seeing the money come in immediately mm-hmm. and there will be days there will be months where you have nothing coming in and you got to obviously stretch your things thin and so i i would recommend having either a way to still have some money come in be it if you're an artist or an arts and crafts person that sells your stuff online or having a part-time job and just knowing that you may 
end up missing a stream day or you're going to have to work your stream schedule around your your part-time job mm -hmm. i i just i wouldn't recommend quitting whatever you're doing and going straight into content crea uh, creation yeah. I, I i would just recommend having something as a cushion mm -hmm. it's a content creation is like a slow burn now we have some questions from the community are you ready yes when you aren't streaming how do you usually spend your day so we kind of touched on this in the official questions mm -hmm. but um if i'm not streaming i normally spend my day with either playing video games or progressing in so if i'm playing a game for streaming and i need to sit down and grind out a few levels or grind out whatever yeah. i need to do I'll, I'll spend time to do that um or i end up sitting here and watching youtube videos while drawing in some form so i'm i'm always trying to keep myself occupied in whatever ability or whatever uh uh capacity i can but it, it's it's normally the same stuff i do on stream mm -hmm. but not with an audience <laughs> uh, yeah just get I'm, to I'm, to chill and play kind of thing yeah I, I i don't have to i don't have to be like oh my god hi <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah why does your shirt say cookie baby so it was kind of a funny haha -ha. um okay. so on top of chocolate mm -hmm. uh, dark chocolate in, in uh to to be exact okay. um i really like cookies i mm -hmm. like chocolate chip cookies um so it was more of a because i kind of knew that i needed something to be like distinguished by yeah. and because you know how people have like a bear on their shirt or, mm -hmm. or a certain logo or, or whatever and my boyfriend quite literally went why not cookie baby and my artist happened to draw it and he was <laughs> like yeah sure <laughs> So it was just more of a sure why not kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But it's something that's kind of in the works, but I can I can kind of talk about it because I've mentioned it a few times, but I'm actually wanting to make a sticker out of it so people can have their own little yeah. cookie baby on whatever. Mm -hmm. Did you have a debut or are you ever planning on doing a re-debut? I have had a debut. Mm -hmm. um, so when I first started streaming, uh, I will admit i actually started being a vtuber just because i didn't want of like i didn't want streams to be without anything just a game and my voice i didn't want yeah. that mm -hmm. i wanted to have some form of like visual video. representation yeah, yeah yeah and so i kind of knew about the vtuber community then when i first started streaming uh, last year like actually started streaming um because i knew about um Kazune Ai? Is that her name? The one with I the long so. brunette hair and the pink stri uh, stripes? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So I knew about her, but I didn't know about anyone else because she was like one of the first VTubers that actually was starting to be popular. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, this is kind of a cool idea. My first two models I never debuted with. Okay. It was just kind of a, uh, I started you just streaming. Started them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so it was one of those that I started using one, and then like next day I had bought another and it appeared on stream, <laughs> and everyone was like, "I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what? When did this show up? Whoa!" <laughs> so, so I never, I never had an official debut until I actually got this model here. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I guess technically speaking, I had it at, like. It, it never was official because it never was out there like how debuts normally go you mm -hmm. you do your intro but it, it was one of those that when i had got a previous model that i own but i don't ap let uh, appear on my streams anymore um it that was where i had transitioned from my original moniker Mew Mew runa to mocha nyako so I, I had a debut there but it wasn't official like the official stuff and then i had an official debut with uh with my current model mm -hmm. um in regards of re-debuting i do have something planned but because I'm, I'm wanting to do like a 2.0 um I, i'm wanting to do some design changes and and have more because the the winter is coming and i'm really wanting to emphasize on that cozy feeling that i have in my streams um there 
at some point i don't know when because i still gotta draw it out um but i will be having a debut a debut with a mocha 2.0 um so i i am interested in having a re-debut and i'll actually take it more seriously than i did this last time <laughs> what type of content do you produce like what kind of categories so i would like to consider myself a variety streamer um however i was really focused on a genshin impact mm -hmm. up until actually recently um just simply because i had i had three different games i yeah had three different games come out this month until as you know in walker had got pushed back to december yeah um so i i might actually be bringing back genshin because i just i can't do smt all the time but um i i was focusing like starting to focus on one game and occasionally it's just like bring in other games so to that but um i i do play a variety of different games and ending question, what are your socials for the ladies and gentlemen at home? So my socials are going to be Mocha Nyako, like Mocha underscore Nyako. It's the same for for my Twitch and for my Twitter. But my YouTube is, uh, if I remember correctly, it is Mocha's Cozy Corner, where you can actually catch the, the latest VODs, if I remember to upload my VOD uh, uh, of my streams on Twitch. Those Those are... I believe the only socials I have. This was VTuber Talks with Akapalisa. Thank you, Mocha, for joining me. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye. So I've been surprised with the amount of ice stream. streaming. Does. Like, I can play a game for hours without streaming mm -hmm. it, and I'm like, I'm good. I'm streaming because I'm, like, looking back and forth and... And like concentrating on both screens a lot like my eyes <laughs> my brain yeah <laughs> like I'm dying. yeah and I, I i think i think that's actually something that i can i can relate to because i i can sit here and play like pokemon for hours mm -hmm. i can go replay another pokemon game and yeah i'll probably get bored of it in an hour because i played it god knows how many times <laughs> but like it, it's a completely different situation when we're talking about streaming because yeah. not only am I focused on the game, I'm also sitting here focused on on making sure that I'm keeping the chat entertained and that I'm talking to, to people in chat. Yeah. I don't know how I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> we just do. It.